Hi, <clears throat> I am going to share about altar making today. Uh, so to begin, altars can be used in many different ways to help you bring an intention into something you want to manifest or into a new home of the intention for the home. It can be used in setting the space for an event or a workshop. It basically is a creation that you create with connecting to other elements of spirit. And it could be, it, the elements could be changed depending on what your focus of is. So for example, for a water manifestation circle, I connected with the water element and asked and communed with it to help me create the altar. So the altar is a space that it's like a vortex creation of energy with that intention infused in it. So it's a pillar of, of that intention and that vibration that helps set the space, the physical space, and the, the vibration radiates out from this altar to influence the people in that space and how they are feeling and how their mind is working and how open they might be um, depending on how open they are, they may feel it strongly or not as strongly, or they might not even know they're feeling it, but they're doing different things, not realizing that they're actually impacted by this altar space. I, use, I usually like to use flowers because they bring this, this uh, clear, pure energy, and they also, different flowers can be used for different spaces. Um, and it's all intuitively guided. So when you are creating the altar, you have the general idea of what the intention is. And then just let yourself be open to inspiration that comes through because any inspiration is likely divinely brought to you. And it's not just from nowhere. Even seeing something in the street or like letting yourself be sparked by a sunflower these are all things that are speaking to you that know that you're ready and open to create an altar space for this specific focus. And they, the spirit is talking to you through these different things. So that's how I approach altar making and the very beginning parts of it. You can, and it sometimes doesn't make sense when you're making the altar and what you are doing based on trust. So, um, Another important thing to have an altar is, I would say, in my opinion, but it's nothing is written in a rule book. Always trust the intuition and the inner gut feeling. But I like to include elements of nature, um, something from the earth, something representing uh, connecting to spirit, which would be like feathers or symbols of birds. Um, imagery, so including the elements of air, fire, water, earth. These are all great things to consider in your altar space. And then the other thing is designating um, that space with a cloth or um, maybe a specific table that is just for that altar. Different things like that can help create that vortex of energy that I was talking about. You can also write things down and put them in the altar space. Um, yeah, so they're like a energy vortex that helps emit out the vibration, holding that intention for the space. And whether it's an event or a home, or if it's for a specific thing you're manifesting, um, it just brings more positive, radiant, loving, energy to that focus which amplifies its power and its magnitude and that's how you do witch stuff <laughs> essentially it's like witchery witchcraft but in a way it's not at the same time it's it's just very elemental to what has been done for many many years um, generations and all sorts of cultures do something of this type you might even have an altar in a religious um, practice with putting candles and prayers, things like that. Or you might have like Thanksgiving, sometimes there's like an offering 
of food, you know, the cornucopia imagery. So the, this altar comes into play a lot into our world, in, in di into different cultures, and for many, many, many years. Um, and if, yeah, we can, once you start recognizing it, you'll see it everywhere.